Hi, this is Mark from ITCU Solutions, and today I just want to go over how to set up a port channel. I recently did a video that I'll link in the description below where I showed you how to set up a basic um, HPE Instant On 1930 switch in the configuration you see here in L3 and L2. Uh, the one thing I forgot to add to that video is it's probably a good idea to add a trunk link or a port channel if you're using another brand or ether channel if you're used to the older Cisco nomenclature. And so all I did was I just added another cable here called GE3 and GE2. And so all we're going to do, I'm just going to show you how to add this trunk one into the mix. So I'm going to go over to the switch real quick. And all you have to do when you go to the switch is just go over to switching. And you're going to come down to trunk configuration. And inside trunk configuration, you have eight trunks that are pre-configured for you. So in other words, port channel groups that are already there for you to um, manipulate or add your ports to it. So all you have to do is just add these, uh, oops, these ports to the port channel group. And we're just going to do one and two on this channel or on this switch because it's the layer two switch. And then we'll just apply that. And this should be effectively all we have to do. The one thing I would say, and you can see up here on the switch up here, that you can actually see that the uh, trunk one group was added to one and two. The one thing I would recommend doing just to verify everything's working, because I have had problems with VLANs not getting copied over automatically. Whoops, did I click on there? Is go to your, your VLAN configuration and validate that this VLAN is also using the one that copied over. And it is, it's it duplicated over uh, from my original VLAN trunks over to this as it was supposed to once I added it to the group. So now that we've done that, we're gonna go over to um, switch, the layer three switch. And we're going to have to re-log in if it even works here. I'm going to have to move the cable because adding those one to the group would have knocked down my trunk because the other side doesn't have the same thing in place yet. So we're going to have to refresh that. Okay. And so this is now the layer three switch that we saw <clears throat> saw on the diagram. So again, all we have to do for this is just go over to switching. And we just have to go to the trunk configure. Trunk configure. And just so I can show you something before we do that is if you go look at your um, VLAN 3, you see this is untagged. So it shows you that it's not configured, configured uh, like the existing trunk is. So when we go over to switching, not trunk, uh, tagged, having the tag VLAN, sorry, I'm using the Cisco trunking words, but it, it doesn't have any tag traffic on it yet. But when we go to the trunk configuration, or port channel configuration, and we add it to port one here, or I mean port two and three together, okay? Once we do this, you'll see that you should see that VLAN information once it comes up, go up automatically. I'm just going to click off just for a sec here. Just look at the port con VLAN configuration and see if it came up. Okay. So you can see now that we have tagged, both these ports now are tagged instead of just this port being tagged, which kind of guarantees you that my new port channel is working correctly. So if I was to go back up to switching now, and we look at this, you should see the number one, one on two and three, which shows you your trunk is active. And just to show you that this is working right now, I'm just gonna ping my the computer that's down on the other switch that's connected to the other switch and it goes across that trunk with no problem um, 
So the other test I'm going to quickly do here is I'm just going to unplug port 3 to show you that it should work in case of a failure. And so I'm just going to again go up to port configuration. Just basically refresh. You see that the interface just dropped off. And even if I go back to my trunk configuration, you should see that now port 3 is down. Okay, so let's just go back to However, even though I'm on the management network, I can still ping a device all the way down. So that just shows you that now you have that redundancy. I think this is a, a good add to add to your basic configuration that I would include any time that you're connecting two switches together because it does protect you from a port failure and it also doubles the speed of your uplink. So I hope this video was helpful. Um, if anyone has any questions, just throw them in the comments below. But again, I do think this is good practice just to utilize this um, feature of these switches. Uh, unless for some reason you don't have enough ports, but it's a very simple thing to do and basically just costs you one additional Ethernet cable. Have a great day.